Thanks very much, and it's terrific to be with you all this morning and uh, to see so many folks interested in technology and where it's going. And uh, <clears throat> my own family is here. I have two nine-year-old twins. Uh, they're out and about. You might see them running around and joining us a little later. Uh, I threw up here visible tweets, which you probably know is one of the ways in which you can visualize tweets and conversations. And there you see, good morning, Digifam friends. Somebody just tweeted out, and you'll see, uh, maybe we'll come back to this later in the morning so you can kind of see, uh, see how, it's, uh, how it's going. So first thing I like to do whenever I do a presentation is to send out a tweet uh, to folks who aren't in the room saying that this is what I'm doing, but if you're interested, uh, there are going to be tips coming from the audience. So this is a big leap of faith on my part that you're going to be tweeting, those of you who do have computers, if you don't, don't worry about it, but that you're going to also say stuff that's useful and helpful. So here we go. I say talking social media college and careers for Digital Family Summit at Digifam. Watch for tips via Digifam and Street Tips. And then I'm about to hit tweet. You should know that I spend between three and six minutes on every single piece of uh, social media content I send out. And yes, that means I don't have a real life. Uh, <laughs> but I take it so seriously because social media is the only thing I do every day that can get me fired today. Social media is the only thing I do every day that can get me divorced today. <laughs> and social, and, and you know, things I say on Twitter are the only things that I ever say that will end up in the Library of Congress. You know this, right? Every tweet ends up in the Library of Congress. That means 300 million plus tweets a day just get archived in there. So uh, I always try to think of what's, what I'm saying and is it going to be out there and, 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 and it will be out there what happens. So now I'm about to hit tweet and I think I've had more than three to six minutes so I'm just gonna hit tweet. And if any of you want to retweet that, you can. But what I've done is I've promised people around the world that you will now be uh, sharing some of the ideas from the conversation so you can um, see that on here. I know that this is a crowd that's much more on Facebook than it is on Twitter, right? How many people on Facebook? Everybody. How many people on Twitter? Okay, not bad, very good. How many on LinkedIn? How many of you know what you're doing on LinkedIn? See the hands start falling, okay, hold on, hold on. Or you all turn into Indian dancers, you go like this, right? You're like, yeah, maybe I know a little bit. But let's see who does know LinkedIn. Let's see this, people who know LinkedIn. Okay, look, these are the people who know LinkedIn. They're gonna be here at the conference all the time. So uh, I'm from India, so I like outsourcing. So I'm outsourcing to these folks. Ask them for tips on LinkedIn. We'll, we will actually talk about LinkedIn uh, 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 in a little while. So you might wonder, what are, what are the kinds of things that we can talk about social media and college and, uh, and careers. And some of you are many years away from college, going to college, or had left college well behind you. What I like to think about is how can we use social media in order to do our work better? And if that's high school work, that's great. If it's middle school work, that's great. But if it's also how do you prep and think about what you're doing with your brand as you go out there. So I will try to share some of my ideas with you in two ways. One is through what I call big picture ideas. What's going on in social media generally? And then some hands-on practical things you can try today if you have a computer or when you get home. Uh, when, when, we, when I first taught a social media class at Columbia for credit, I said to my students, if your parents knew you're paying Columbia University tuition, for a class in Facebook or Twitter, they'd call my boss and get me fired. So we have to think about ways in which we can use social media in order to do our work better, to make it a part of our strategic, uh, kind of think of strategic ways in which we can use it. And so that was the idea of what I was trying to do uh, with, with social media. So what I'm going to do is walk through a, a few slides, but in a session like this, it's the Q&A that's most important, and I know you folks have questions about uh, kind of where social media might be going, but your own uses of it. And I wanna share as much as I can and give you as many tips as I can about all of that. So please do 
uh, do ask. I have, I've said here, find this and more on my social media guide. I have the social media guide at bit.ly slash 3 If you write that address down and if you go there, you'll find my social media guide and you'll also find links to the slides and things we're talking about. Let me give you my contact information. I did bring some business cards, so you're welcome to have them and uh, I'm happy to collect the business cards of the adults in the room. Uh, these also make great dental floss, so <laughs> please uh, do take one. Uh, my email address is 3 at 3.net and my website is 3.net, but not 3.com. 3.com is a chain of motels in Florida. So the first lesson for today is the importance of your cyber identity and kind of thinking through what you're going to be doing online and where, what how you represent yourself is going to be very, very important as we, as we talk about this. I thought I'd start by showing you a few signs of the times, as I like to call it. I don't know how clearly you can see it, but on this cover of the New Yorker, there's a little buffering sign. Does everybody see that? And I love this cover. I thought it captured really well this idea that we're constantly waiting for stuff. Now, the kids in the room will not believe this, but we used to call WWW the worldwide wait. We would sit around in the 1990s, yes, that's like a century ago, and we would have like a magazine or a book and a computer. And you would open up a website and you would read the screen and then you'd hit next and then you'd look at your book and 30, 40 seconds later you'd come back and hit next and that's how you did things. Now it turns out the, the time between things like that has reduced so much, right? It's uh, tenths of a second, but we're still as impatient as we were in the 90s. It just, we've lost sense of that scale. Uh, I posted this on my CNET blog where I write about social media, and someone wrote in the comments that they waited five minutes for the picture to load. <laughs> they thought this was something that was happening on their screen. They didn't understand this was a piece of art. Here's another sign of the times. Again, you may not be able to see it that clearly, but in that headline, against all odds, it says Linsanity, S-I Linsanity. There's a hashtag on a cover of a magazine. I believe we're going to see more hashtags uh, in the work that we uh, see around us. And uh, obviously you saw how well Digifam has been kind of ingrained in your brains. And uh, that's one of the things that you have to do. So. Uh, this was Sports Illustrated putting this on the cover. Uh, it's Lynn Sanity, for those of you from New York, uh, you may know that there was for about two minutes something called Lynn Sanity last year before uh, Jeremy Lynn injured himself. And this is kind of sen sense of what we saw. And I bet you will see more hashtags in magazines. You're already seeing them on a lot of TV shows. And it's, it's about connecting kind of the, the digital stuff we do with everything that's happening around us, and that's going to be increasingly important. I thought I'd just walk you through a few uh, big picture thoughts on where things are going, and this is uh, a social media um, graphic that Facebook put together. This was done when Facebook had less than 500 million users. Now you know it's about to hit a billion users. Uh, but what I liked about it, this is that the that these, these points of light, which represent 500 connections on Facebook, that Jakarta and Indonesia, all the way on the right over there, is as bright as Philadelphia, New York, London, San Francisco, which gives you a sense of kind of how some of this stuff is growing. Let's look at the 10 largest countries on Facebook. What strikes you when you look at those numbers on Facebook? Yeah, lots of, uh, lots of developing countries, right? You see that on there? And um, you, you also notice that the UK, which used to be number two in the world, has kind of fallen to number six there. You see uh, you, the European countries kind of just barely holding on there. India, which Bloomberg uh, Business Week projected would be uh, number one by the end of 2014, wasn't even on this list about 20 months ago. And a, uh, and a journalist called me to ask, why do Indians like Facebook when it joined this list? And I said, Indians don't like Facebook. Indians love Facebook because we're, we're nosy people. And we want to know what people are saying and doing all the time. 
and Facebook does that, as you, can, uh, as you all know. So here you're looking at the 10 fastest growing, not over the last week, but over a week last year. And when I saw this, I wanted to save it because if I were part of the ruling family of Saudi Arabia, I'd be really scared, right? When a quarter million people do anything voluntarily and you're a dictatorship, you've got to worry and they should be worried. And you can see other countries as well. This is the percentage growth in one week. Uh, you know how hard it is to get a quarter million people to do anything? I could stand in Times Square giving out dollar bills and people would be like, hey, what's the catch? You got anthrax on there? What's going on? They won't, you know, it's not easy. But here are people joining Facebook and just kind of jumping on board there. Uh, this is, I'm going to show you three slides of a kind of look at how social media has grown in the last uh, few years. So this is June 09 and you see how kind of how many different colors there are on social media map. Uh, there's a map that shows different social networks and you see across the bottom a whole bunch of them. My favorite social media networks name of all time is on this list. You may not be able to see it from where you're sitting but it's right here and it's called Wretch. W-R-E-T-C-H. And you might wonder, well, how did that work exactly? Did you say to people, be my wretch? <laughs> wretch me? Like, how did that work exactly? I'm not sure. But um, two years later, watch how much, what percentage of the world turns blue in, in two years. And then watch again as it turns even more blue. Now, of course, you notice that China is not on Facebook, not on Twitter. They have banned YouTube, all of these uh, social networks there and that's an interesting conversation maybe for another time about what's happening in China. The fact is though that they're very interested in China and I met a group of a hundred uh, college students from China that came up to Columbia and I had this big talk about uh, about technology in the future and their main interest was please show us Facebook and how it works and so that was that was interesting. Now Russia is also on Facebook millions of people but it isn't become the dominant network yet. And that's kind of what you're seeing on that map. And on my uh, social media uh, guide that I told you, the bit.ly slash 3 social, you go in there, you'll see more advanced, um, you'll see this and other, other items as, uh, as well. Now I'm going to share with you the dirty secret of social media. I'll give you a second to absorb it. It's so wait, you'll say, wait a minute, if most people are going to miss it, then why are we here at breakfast? Why did we rush from the, uh, uh, from the Liberty Bell to come to this talk uh, well, if, it's, if most people are going to miss it? Well, the fact is that it's true. Most people will miss what you do. And uh, it is uh, one of the ways in which social media is different from uh, a lot of other things, that social media can help you get attention to the things you want. Now, while this is true about social, social it's also true about kind of any other uh, mode of communication you're used to seeing. You know, I'm on, I, I do a lot of television work in, in New York City. Anybody here from New York City? A few folks? Okay. So I'm on, I've, I've spent, you know, 11 years doing morning television in New York and I bet almost no one here has seen me on it. Uh, what happens is that I'm on TV on, on the CBS station in New York once a week, but almost no one I know watches me. People in my own building don't watch me. People in my own apartment don't watch me. Uh, the other day my wife promised she said, we'll make sure we watch you. So I came home and said, honey, did you catch the segment? And she said, well, you know, this is in the morning. They're getting ready for school. We're flipping through the channels. And uh, they came across the penguins of Madagascar. And they picked the penguins over daddy. And that's what happened. So this is true about other media, uh, other places where people communicate. But the fact is that you can use social media to put and push attention to the things you deeply care about. And that's what you need, to be think, uh, you need to be thinking about. So while most people may miss it, there are ways, including hashtags and using the at mentions, to make sure people see what you're, uh, what you're uh, doing. Let's, take an, let's look at an example of how 
uh, a very uh, a serious topic, in this case, uh, what's going to happen in Libya after the, uh, after the revolution there is being used by NATO. And you'll say, well, what has this got to do with college and what we're doing? I think there are some lessons here. Here's the head of NATO publishing on Facebook that he's going to shut down the NATO operations in Libya before the press release, before the press conference. And so when you look at it, what might be a reason that they put it on Facebook first before they put it on anything else? Any thoughts? Yeah. Everyone's on Facebook, that's right. Not everyone, especially the people of Libya, are not hanging out on nato.gov slash we are bombing you or whatever that is, right? They're not there. So part of it is you've got to be thinking about the, the, the things that you're trying to tell the world, you're trying to get out there, put it in the place where the conversation is happening already. The reason you put hash digifam on uh, anything while you're here is to inject it into the stream of conversation that's happening, right? So you've got to be thinking about that. The other reason he did it is you can see on the screen what we call social actions. More than 500 social actions right on that screen. You see likes, shares, and comments on there. And so that means that you have a chance to get your work seen by more people in more places. Any questions or comments uh, about that? Yes. Number of likes on this particular item is so low. Well, it, it depends on you know how you how you look at it. I bet some people here would be very happy to get that many likes. What uh, this is also uh, that he turns out when you when I went back to look at this and I talked to the folks at uh, the uh, at, at the Department of Defense. Turns out that he didn't have as a lot of people following him at first. And that's where more people uh, would come in afterwards. But that's also a good lesson for all of us, that people always ask me, how do I get more followers, right? You're all interested in that. How do you get more subscribers to your content? How many more likes to your business pages? So I will tell you that, but I'll tell you at the end of my session what I call my social media success formula. Uh, you can tell I do a lot of work on TV because I tease to the good part, right? So. <laughs> Like you're ever, you ever watch TV and it says, is the sandwich you're eating about to kill you film at 11? And you're like, no, tell me now. I'm eating the sandwich now. But we're, if I gave it to you, it'd all walk out. So I'm going to hold on to the formula to give it to you at the end. So, so one of the things that I tell people, you want more followers, more friends, more subscribers to your content. Make sure you, instead of worrying about the new people, make sure you're helping and giving good information to the people who are already following you. So in this particular case, by putting it on Facebook first, he got a whole lot of people who missed out. But the people who were following him were then able to tell their friends and suddenly got a lot more people following him than would have before. Let me just give you another example, again from uh, the revolutions of last year, about how social media and digital media are working. You may have, uh, I hope you all were following and studied in school about the, uh, some of the changes that happened in the Middle East and uh, just day before yesterday, the new uh, uh, president of um, Egypt was sworn in. And all of this started on January 25, January 25th, two years ago, or uh, two Januaries ago. And the Egyptian government realized that you can't just control people in that Tahrir Square. You can't just kind of beat them up over there. And what they did was they went onto the internet and killed the internet. And that's what you're seeing here. So this is where the internet traffic collapses, as you can see. And what is the lesson from this for, uh, for, for, for that the Egyptian government understood is that you have to go after people where they are, not just the physical place, but also the online space. So we, as we're trying to do our work, have to be thinking about both the physical and the digital of what we are doing. Again, please ask a question if you have any. I tell people who are not using Twitter, um, when they say, well, Twitter is a waste of time, I show them this uh, tweet. This is from the US government. 
from the State Department at TravelGov, which I recommend everybody follow. And what it does is it is saying here in this particular case, if you want to evacuate, if you want to leave on our special flight out of the country, you better come to the airport. You notice they don't send you a nice limousine to your hotel asking, would you like to join us as we evacuate? They just tweet it out. So if you're not following, you're, you don't have a chance to, uh, to, uh, per, you know, to know what's going on. Some of the older folks in the room will know, or the students who have studied history will know, that this may look a little more, it reminds me, of what happened in Vietnam. At the end of the war, there was a chopper leaving, there's a famous image, there are famous images of this chopper leaving the, uh, uh, the rooftop of the embassy in Saigon, and that's what this is. So whenever someone says, you know, Twitter is a waste of time, I point them to this, and I tell people, you have to follow um, tweets that you really care about. But I told you that you will miss almost everything. So what can you do? So one of the things is that you can, in fact, follow people to make sure you see their tweets. How do you do that? Anybody know? Yeah. Twitter lists is a way to do it, absolutely. But there's even a more surefire guaranteed way. You can set it up for SMS messages. That's right, through text, to follow via text or follow via SMS. So let me just show you what that means. If you go onto um, any account, let me just go uh, home here. Oops, sorry. Uh, so you know how you can follow on your smartphone, but you will miss most people, right, when you follow on the smartphone? Instead, you can follow via, um, let's see here, let me just go into Melody Kramer here, and you'll see there's a way to follow Melody like this. Turn on mobile notifications. If you do that, every time she tweets, it comes into an SMS or a text message. And I don't need to tell all of you how much you love SMS and how much you love text messages and how you're able to get them. So I follow, don't do this by the way for people you don't really care about or people who over tweet because you'll get too much stuff. Uh, I did that, I turned this on for some news outlet and I got 100 texts in one day from, from these guys. So do this for the people you really care about. So I follow, uh, in, in my case I do it for the TravelGov website, if you travel, you should always be doing that if you travel outside the US. I also do uh, my father's Twitter account. I want to know what he's saying. I also follow my wife on Twitter. It's not spying. Uh, if, if she's tweeting out to the world, why shouldn't I know what she's tweeting? Uh, her, her Twitter handle, so what I do is I go on here and I have that um, uh, turn on uh, notifications. So I go in here and I follow her online that way. And I also do at CDC emergency. Those are the only four accounts I do. Why CDC emergency? Because the only way I'll know when the zombies come, right? <laughs> you, you know about this? They had this really fun promotion where they did this whole thing about the zombies coming. Uh, but much more seriously, it also has great prep stuff on emergencies and health things and also uh, uh, floods and fires, all kinds of useful stuff. So those are the only ones that I follow on, on my SMS. What are some that you might follow uh, uh, as a family on SMS? You might follow each other, you might follow things from your school, and then as you get ready uh, to apply to colleges, one of the things I tell you is, you know, it's not so important to follow them uh, on, on Twitter, uh, you know, via SMS, but Think about adding more people that you're listening to on Twitter. A lot of us are, think about social media as a way to, uh, to broadcast our stuff, which is true, but are you listening on social media is what I would ask you to think about. So one of the things you should be doing is as you, think, as you identify, you know, um, for, uh, depending on where you are in the kind of the college prep, you should be thinking, well, you know, maybe there are 20 colleges I'm interested in, and then as you narrow that down, start friending and uh, you know, start connecting and uh, following so that you kind of see what are the things they're sharing, what are they doing. I spend a lot of time talking to colleges, the people who run college social media accounts, and they tell me that they're spending more and more time trying to reach people across different ages, not just current students and alumni, 
but also prospective students. And they see a lot of high schoolers and even earlier connecting with them on Facebook and Twitter and things like that. Uh, now, this is the part where uh, anybody who is talking to young folks has to scare the young folks. So that's my job now, this part of the presentation. And I'm going to sh share with you this quote. Uh, at this point, I have to own my own role in the story. I was careless on Twitter, ignored some warning signs, and realized too late that my followers weren't the only ones watching me. What does that mean? This, this is uh, about a journalist who just got fired for tweeting stuff that he shouldn't have been, and he lost his job. This just happened on Friday. But this could be for almost a dozen other, maybe hundreds of other folks who've gotten in trouble on social media. You really have to think through everything you put online. Right? I mean, I've been saying this for years before there was social media, before just you know, online, on email, on things like that. But you have to really think through everything you do. This is why I said I spend between three and six minutes on social media thinking, what am I posting? What's going to happen? Who's going to see it? So please keep that in mind. People lose their jobs on a regular basis because of what they post on there. People get kicked out of school. Uh, I know somebody who was up for a terrific job, and the employers went back and looked at this person's personal Twitter account, what they figured was a personal Twitter account, and just saw that they were um, that this person, who is in real life a nice guy, but online wasn't so nice and was uh, on uh, you know was just saying things that he shouldn't have, and he didn't get the job. So you'll see that one of the things that we, are, we do in uh, college admissions is that we take a look at what's out there about you, right? So this is where I hope I'm starting to scare some people. Uh, and this is also the point where somebody will say, well, what about something that's a personal Facebook account versus, a second fa uh, versus having a second Facebook account? Now, what happens is that you can Obviously, anybody can create Facebook accounts, but I tell people you should have one Facebook account, not two. And I know some people do, but let me tell, let me tell you what happened last year. I went to the city of Hyderabad in India, where I met the Facebook team whose job it is to find duplicate accounts and kill them. They kill thousands of accounts a day based on duplicate accounts they find on Facebook. So you might say, well, how do they find this and what happens? Well, the, the number one way they find duplicate accounts is through an algorithm that they have to look at how many connections this person has, what's happening, what they're saying, et cetera. But you know what the number two way in which they find fake Facebook accounts or duplicate Facebook accounts is from the people's so-called friends. Because you know that every Facebook profile has at the bottom, it says, report this account. Have you ever noticed that? And People report their own friends saying, hey, this is my, you know, they had a fight, and they'll say, this is my friend's fake account. And when they find a fake account, two accounts or duplicate accounts, they don't write you a nice email saying, which one would you like to keep? They delete both. And so some of you might be saying, well, one solution is that I can just take down Facebook just before I go to, you know, as I'm applying for college. Well, I talk to college admissions officers who tell me that that's actually a warning sign if they find somebody who is otherwise active and has a lot of extracurriculars and all this great stuff that they're doing, but they can't find a Facebook account for that person. That's a warning sign that this person was so afraid of what they were doing that they took down their account. So one of my suggestions to the young people in the room especially is instead of uh, uh, thinking about Facebook as a place where you're going to worry about everything. You should be worried about everything. I worry about everything I post on it. But kind of think about how you can use it to enhance your brand, like make your brand, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a, in a minute. Uh, people are, just, this is just an example from a work-related thing. Um, some of you know this airline. Uh, people talk about brands all the time. Yesterday you had the folks from uh, United Breaks Guitars here, right? You're Dave here. And people are always talking. Well, if you were 
say, finishing college and you tweeted this, right? And you go to apply for a job in the airline industry, it doesn't have to be this airline. The people note what you're doing and what you say lives on forever, right? It goes in the Library of Congress. Your own great-grandchildren are going to be like, I wonder what Grandma Jenny's life was like in 2012. And, well, she doesn't even have to go to a computer, right, this great-grandchild of yours. They'll just think it up and it comes up. And when they look, they'll say, wow, uh, great-grandma Jenny was so interesting and she did all this great stuff. Or they might say, well, she tweets a lot about shoes, right? <laughs> Not this Jenny. This tells you, Jenny, I actually, that's the example I always use, but you're in the room, so it wasn't you. So uh, let's see, somebody had a hand. Pardon me? I, I believe, I absolutely believe that. Um, questions? Somebody had a hand up. I, th I thought I saw somebody. Yeah. So you said that what you can find your Facebook Right. Like, if you make it private, Right. Well, first they see if you have one at all, right? And now, and I'm going to show you some new things happening on Facebook. So just hold that question. We'll come to that in a minute. Okay. Uh, just to show you how some things are changing, this is... Uh, an example of somebody who got a job at a company called Red Monk. The formal job offer was made and accepted on Twitter. And you'll say, ooh, that's kind of new, until you look at the date. It says May 08. It was four years ago, right? In 1995, I could have done a session like this and said, the job offer was made and accepted on this newfangled technology called email, right? And everybody had gone, ooh. Because in the old days, that's 95 or so, people would get jobs based on a handshake or FedEx or a fax, right? So things are constantly changing. Yes? Um, how do you make okay, we'll talk about that. Yes, I knew that would get attention. So we'll, 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 we'll talk about that. Uh, one of the things I find is that most young people are not on LinkedIn or not using LinkedIn, and I encourage people, once they've done like their first summer job, or uh, done some kind of work, or had an internship, that you should think about creating a LinkedIn account. Because what LinkedIn can do is help you uh, by connecting with your peers. And you've heard some of this already in other sessions, but connecting, and, and my idea is that you have to grow your network when you don't need it, so it's there when you need it. Does that make sense? You can't just say, oh, I need a job now, and I want to start using LinkedIn. It's too late. So those of you who are comfortable using LinkedIn, start using it now when you don't need it. A couple of tips about LinkedIn if you're on it. And you look at this, you can see I got a bunch of LinkedIn requests. Which are the two ones I'm definitely not going to immediately say yes to? The ones without the photographs, right? Because they're not. They're, they're not inviting. You have to give people a reason to not ignore you when you're online or when you're trying to connect with them. I also wanted to just show you, and for the youngest people in the room, this may not make sense yet, but I know the parents will understand and appreciate this. There's a thing section on LinkedIn called LinkedInLabs.com, and there you can see for the first time your network visualized. And so what you're seeing here is each dot is a person's LinkedIn account. You zoom in, you can see their name. You zoom in further, you can see their photographs and their bios. So this is my wife's LinkedIn account, and this is her network. And you can actually visualize it for the first time, and it's kind of interesting. And then you will see here the value of this. Do you connect with Nico, who has this many connections, or do you connect with Seth, who has way fewer connections? And as you uh, go in your life and career, you will find that having connections and knowing people and growing your network is going to be um, more important. I'm going to share with you a few ideas on communication online, on social and non-social media that I think you'll find helpful. This is an example from uh, somebody who wrote to me, out, some, uh, somebody who w uh, was a former student at the J School, not my student, and she just wrote, hi, I was wondering where the best place to send. She wanted to connect with a, new, with, a, with a big website. I sent a couple of emails to them trying to find out, but have had no luck. And she signed it, thanks, with just her first name. No last name, no signature file, right? You all know what a signature file is? With a little bio, uh, 
you know, links to things, you should always think about this. So I showed this at a session, and it turned out the person whose job it is was in the audience to connect. So he said, anytime you want to connect with somebody at the Huffington Post, connect with me and contact me. And his Twitter handle is C Canal, C K A N A L. So if any of you are ever interested in connecting with the Huffington Post, I've given you his name, and you can tweet at him and say, I'm, I've got a, maybe you're a teenager with a new idea that you want to get out there, you're starting a, a business, you want to uh, blog for Huffington Post, whatever it is, now you know how to do this. But imagine somebody writing without any background or explanation. Another way to think about it is whenever you write to somebody for the first, uh, I mean, you write to somebody, if not for the first time, have a, like a little greeting, right? Hey, hope you're well. Or, uh, you know, what are you up to? Hope your summer is going well. Something before you jump into what I call a big ask, as he did there. So, he, uh, she did there. Now I'm going to show you the opposite. Here's somebody writing to me with a, with a job opening, and look how nice she's being. Over the top. And this is, by the way, it turns out, I found out, a $150,000 job that she has to offer. Can you imagine writing a note like this? Please pardon my popping into your inbox unannounced. I'm hoping that da 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 da. And then she's referring to somebody. Look at this, right? If I had a $150,000 job to offer somebody, I'm like, yo, here's a job. You want it? Or you know anybody who wants it? Here's a link, right? It pays $150,000. But this is one of the things that I learned from this person, that you have to be humble, you have to be, uh, you know, the, the rules of being nice online apply no matter what position you're in, whether you're asking for a job or someone, or you're offering a job, you still have to be nice. Don't let power get to your head is the lesson from this. Any questions or comments about this? Okay. I'm sorry? How do you get that? Yeah, it was now two years ago, but, but I do post a lot of digital jobs on my Facebook business page, which I'll show you in a minute, and so you can, uh, you can look there. Let's talk about your personal brand, and you'll say, well, I'm 14 years old. I don't have a personal brand. Well, you can. You have to understand that p your branding will happen to you. Branding will happen to you whether, it, whether you seek it out or not. So that's why you should be always aware of what is your brand and what's happening. But you can use social media to enhance it, craft it, and build it. Uh, the, one of the tests of your brand is do people return your emails, your phone calls? What happens, right? Do they participate? And you can, one of the simplest ways to increase your brand is by being a great pointer to interesting content. That means you don't have to have your own content all the time to be interesting to people. You can point to other people's great work. And there's so many examples in the media and elsewhere by people who point to, with full credit, to someone else, and they become a place where they become someone who's trusted online and get followed and connected to a lot. Okay. So let's now talk about Facebook. I'm just going to go in and show you some some of the new things on Facebook and also answer those questions um, that you might have about Facebook. So how many of you have the new Facebook? Almost everybody, right? So Facebook underwent a lot of dramatic changes over the last year. And um, they, it all came to a head kind of in the fall of last year. This looks like the old Facebook, but is in fact the new Facebook. So I'm just going to quickly walk through the new stuff that you've seen <coughs> on here. So. <clears throat> when you go to, <clears throat> I'm sorry, <clears throat> when you go to Facebook, you used to have just the small picture to worry about. Now you have this big cover image to worry about. And what I tell people about the cover image is use it to showcase what you're doing, what your interests are, uh, what you're working on. Use it that way, and you can have a nice big picture like that on there. Uh, one tip about your own photograph on social media, Twitter, LinkedIn, etc., is it should be a recent recognizable photo of you. Not you as a child, unless you're a child yourself. Uh, you with the child, uh, but just make it you and recognizable. What you'll, you'll see on here is, this is funny, I found a picture of, uh, I mean, I, I was in a cab and the taxi driver had a giant angry bird on there. 
I think to throw at people who don't pay, uh, pay their uh, bills. Anyway, <clears throat> so what you can do on Facebook is to, uh, to constantly share things around you and share photographs and things like that. And you'll say, uh, well, I don't have a lot to, to say, but you, you can have things to show. That's one thing that I encourage people to do. You'll also see that Facebook is now uh, constantly coming, uh, kind of increasing the size of the images that you see on there. So the ability to take and share photographs is going to be increasingly important. Let me show you another thing that they're doing on, on Facebook um, that you can, you can see now is that, um, let's, I think I have to make this even smaller. They created this thing called a sidebar on the right, right, the, the ticker. How is they going to make it even more irritating? Anybody know? They're going to add ads to it, right? They're going to add ads to it. The good news is that Facebook over the next couple of months is going to give you an option whether you can be used in advertising um, uh, for Facebook itself. You know about this, right? The one way that you you serve as an advertising guinea pig is by your content. Uh, like you hit like on Starbucks, then they will show you know, uh, your name, your photo, liking Starbucks to other people. And they collect money from Starbucks and give you no money. So they're going to give you an option to turn that off in the months ahead. Watch for that. Uh, the other thing that Facebook did was it went after this idea. There, there was this great thing on Facebook called security by obscurity. And what that meant was that you could uh, post something on Facebook and it, was, it would get so buried that nobody would ever be able to find it. You remember this? You have to hit older post, older post to get to yesterday. Older post to get to last month, again and again. Now, with a single click, I can go in here and hit 2009 and everything I did in 2009 is suddenly visible to all my friends, all my public postings. So they've gotten rid of, they've made it much easier to find your content. And that's really scary. So when I show this to uh, college students who are already in college, they freak out about this. Because they understand that the public data, what their understanding of what's public has changed in the last three, four years. Right? What you think is OK to be public will change as you start looking for jobs, going to college, et cetera. So be very, very aware of that as you're um, on, uh, on social media. So one of the things you do is to adjust. Every, every piece of content you post, you can now put whether, uh, what level of privacy you want on a piece of content. You'll see there's a little uh, thing that comes up with a globe. And then you can have different groups of people you can send it to, or lists of people. right? How many of you are really good at making lists on Facebook? All of you should learn how to do this. This is the most, maybe one of the most important things I'm going to tell you is learn how to make lists on Facebook. And what you can do is you should have a list called friends, like real friends, maybe. Uh, but you should absolutely have a list called creepy cousins. You know about this, right? You have to accept the friends, uh, the cousin's friend request because otherwise at Thanksgiving, grandma is going to be like, hey, I heard you didn't accept Joey's friend request. So you accept him, but he doesn't have to see everything you're posting, right? So learn to look and have these different lists of play people so that you can control what people see. And then um, what you can do is, the one caution, he will not know that you put him on this list unless you use the Facebook email system to write to them. So uh, then it'll say, Dear Creepy Cousins. So what should you do? You change it to Favorite Cousins, right? <laughs> the creepy ones always think they're your favorites anyway. But anyway, the, this, maybe I'm telling you more about my family than I meant to. Uh, this, I'm sure, doesn't happen in your case. Um, another, another thing that's happening on Facebook is that you can now subscribe to people's content on Facebook as if they were, as if it were a Twitter feed. So you don't need to be my friend to accept my content, to see my content. And that's a new thing on Facebook. So you can turn on the subscribe feature, and then people can subscribe to your content on Facebook. So if you haven't tried that yet, you can do that. But you can also subscribe to people you're interested in. And so there, uh, if you look at this, <coughs> if you look at the screen here, 
you'll see that um, like that number, the 104,000, that like that's the number of people who've subscribed to my content without being my friends. These are just people who have subscribed to me. So you can find this at facebook.com slash Srinet if you, if you want to take a look at that. Once you turn on subscribe, you can also control what people see, I think, a little better because then you are now sharing kind of publicly. The other thing that you can do on, 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 this, on all of this stuff is when you're posting something, let me just show you here, uh, there's a new setting on Facebook called acquaintance, friends accept acquaintances, which you've probably seen already. Have people seen that? It says friends accept acquaintances. How do you turn friends into acquaintances? You can do them one at a time, or I'm going to give you a URL you can use and to change 30, 40 people at a time to acquaintances, right? You, I mean, some of the younger kids may know the difference between a friend and an acquaintance. Somebody said an acquaintance is somebody you know on Facebook, a friend is someone you know in real life. But uh, you can go in here and friends accept acquaintances. How to change it? You go to uh, facebook.com slash friends slash organize. Facebook.com slash friends slash organize will help you do 30, 40 people at a time into acquaintances. So that, I think, is helpful. Uh, and let me see any other Facebook questions. So the, one of the questions she asked was, how do people know, uh, or what, what do they see about you if you're, you're a closed account? Well, what happens is that even if you're not connected to somebody on Facebook, one of the things that shows up is your name, your photo, and all your likes are publicly seen on Facebook, right? This is constantly changing, so maybe they will remove that. So one of the things I can tell as an admissions officer when I see your page is I can see what are the things you've liked, even if I can't see you specifically. But also what happens, and this will be more clear as you kind of uh, are in, the, uh, you know, in, in college for a few more years, is that because you might know people who went to your school and are now at my school, more content becomes visible. Mark Zuckerberg's idea is that more and more content should be visible. He said in November of 2009 that privacy is no longer the social norm, which I think is ridiculous, right? Uh, we all think privacy is really important. So let me pause here and let me just take some uh, questions and then I'll leave you the social media success formula. Stephanie's creeped up to the front here, so I know I'm about to get the, the hook. So let's do some questions. Um, the young lady who asked the question about uh, how do you create a second Facebook account, uh, she's left. But if someone sees her, please tell her I was saying do not create that second Facebook account. Instead, apply really serious privacy to what you're doing. If you haven't done this also, by the way, go to the upper right under home. There's a button called uh, account settings. There you can download your Facebook pro uh, data all your Facebook data in one place. And if you see it, you'll be very scared because every chat you've ever had is still there. Every friend you ever deleted is still there. All of it shows up. So my suggestion to you is to really think through in a new way how you use all of this stuff because it's going to have an impact. Yes? Go ahead. Okay. Um, what people do you feel like can benefit from having a subscriber um, function? I mean, I'm a journalist, so for me it works. But I'm kind of sure. wondering what other folks are sort of using it for both friends and also this public self. Right. So the, one of the ways in which, one of the advantages of doing this is that it makes you think every time you're posting that you have these friends who are not, especially for young people, you know, who have, maybe I'm talking like high school plus, it forces them to know that there is this public profile of their content and people are subscribing to them. And so that's one of the, uh, one of the reasons I, I'm telling you all to think about it. You may not be ready, the, you know, as a journalist is a different fun uh, matter, but I would, I would urge you to kind of at least think about turning on subscribe and then knowing what um, happens on there. Uh, I have, so my Facebook business page, right? This is my business page, three tips where I post technology jobs and tips about technology. But I also have my personal profile, which I have the subscribe feature turned on for. Yeah. Um, you said that people, you know, in jobs or whatever, will check you out online and see what you are posting. Mm -hmm. But what about people who are following me, like on Twitter? There's a lot of unscrupulous people who will just start to follow me, and I can spend my whole day going through checking each person out. And is that something they go back? 
that far to see right. uh, fewer problems. Right. Problems. So one of the problems on Twitter is that there are a lot of fake and spam accounts that are following you. And Twitter is constantly deleting thousands of accounts to do that. So you could spend your time worrying about it, or you could just say that those will get taken. I mean, you can hit block if you want to. But I do check out. I look at everyone who follows me, not as much to delete those, but more to find people I want to follow. So that's, that's sort of what I do. But it's a, it's a good idea. Maybe once, in every, once a week you go in and delete those fake accounts. But you'll find that they get deleted as well. Other questions? Yes. Hi. Um, do you have a rule of thumb for community invitations to you accept something and I'm moderating for a group so I'll get all kinds of Right. So my rule on LinkedIn is to always accept the following. People I already know, people I should know, and people I'd like to know. So it might be more generous or more open than most people's, but the reason is people always tell me I don't accept people I don't know. That'd be as if when you come come up after the conference, come up and say hello to me, and I go, no, stay away, I don't know you, who are you, I don't know you, right? I would never be standing here in front of you if Stephanie and I hadn't met, and we didn't know each other, right? We got to know each other. Life is about those possibilities, but be really aware, and be careful about who you say yes to, find out about it. That's the good news about all the social media stuff. There's more stuff that you can be aware of than ever before. Um, I want to show you that social media formula. So just before then, I wanted to show you a new site that I've been playing with that's also part of my scare everybody agenda here. What you're looking at is one dock street. What's that? That's our hotel, right? And here you can see for the first time what people are tweeting and posting. I'm a little worried about this, um, what I post on here. Oh, that's okay, that's harmless. I never know when I go in a session like this what I'm gonna show. But there's somebody who tweeted, life is so fragile, please don't take it for granted. Hey, that's a nice note to end on, but you, you can see photographs, you can see everything happening around a house, down to a house, on this new account called Geofedia. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's a product that I'm just testing out, and the other day in Florida, when I was there, I was, uh, we were l clicking around here and I saw somebody uh, had just come out of a shower, sh she was wearing clothes, uh, but just tweeted like, here's my new hairstyle or something like that. And you could see which house it was coming from. That's really scary, right? So how does this work? This works on geolocation, which you turn on on your phone. I encourage you to turn it off. The problem is a lot of services on your cell phones require you to have geolocation turned on. But I encourage you not to use geolocation. You have to really be careful about this. So are you ready for the social media success formula? Yes. yes. OK. You're like, finally, something useful. All right. Let's, uh, uh, let's do this here. I'm, I'm going to take you to the formula. Um, you, can, you can find my links and everything I've, uh, I've, I've talked about here. So first, I'm just going to. Uh, oops, um, give you here a couple of things on what I call sustainable social media, how to uh, keep doing this and keeping your day job and your kids and everything else. Uh, <laughs> nutshell mail, anybody using that? Nutshell mail brings your social media to you in one daily email, which is really good. Bliss control helps you keep track of all your accounts and how to change passwords and fix your privacy settings. I really like that. But now we're ready for the success formula. So it's Sunday morning, right? So this is perfect. Sunday morning, we're all going to pretend we're in church being led by a Hindu priest, which is really weird. Uh, uh, most of us are not, most of us are probably not Catholics in the room, including me, but we're going to pretend we're in Catholic church on Sunday, uh, led by a Hindu priest. And I'm going to show you the formula and you're going to read it out loud, really loud and clear. We're going to shake that chandelier as we say this out loud as kids and everyone, okay? So the first word is helpful. You're gonna just read it really clearly and loud on here. Ready? I can't hear you. Ready? Yeah, ready. All right, here we go. Helpful. helpful. Useful. Louder. Warning. I can't hear you. Say it, sister. Say it, brother. Hallelujah. Kids were really good this time. Uh, that's the formula. People ask me, how do I get more followers? How do I become more successful on social media? 
That's the list, right? Think about everything you post on Facebook, on Twitter, and elsewhere, and say, is it one or more of these things? If it is, you're going to be successful. If it's not, you're going to be boring, and you're not going to be successful. The same applies to blogging and every other kind of means of communications. Keep these words in your mind. I know there's some lawyers in the room. Actionable does not mean get sued, just so you know, right? <laughs> Actionable means encourage people to take action. With that, I want to uh, remind you of my contact information. If I can ever help you with anything you're working on, just email me and mention Digifam in the subject line and I'll know it's you. I'll also, leave, I'll also have my business cards and Stephanie's going to tell us what we're doing next. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.